This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. On the South today, Invercargill Mayor Tim Shadbolt shows solidarity and stands against the decentralisation of Dunedin's hospital services in Dunedin. Swimming in Lumsden has never been so good and Freedom Campers deserve our thanks. And 20 brave souls risk life and limb to rescue salmon who found themselves in trouble in Cust. Kia ora, good evening, welcome to the South Today. This is the news, I'm Craig Story. Breaking, a driver is in a critical condition following a crash near Palmerston this very afternoon. Around 4.23pm, the driver, who was driving at speed, failed to stop for police. A short pursuit initiated on the Hamden Herbert Road, State Highway 1. Almost two minutes later, the driver crossed the centre line, crashed and rolled their vehicle off the road. An ambulance has been called to the scene, however the road is not currently blocked. The driver will be taken by helicopter to Dunedin Hospital due to their injuries. As per procedure, the serious crash unit has been notified and the Independent Police Conduct Authority will be advised. Anyone who saw the crash or the driver who has not already been spoken to the, by the police are please asked to contact Oamaru Police as soon as you are able. Tim Shabolt backs Dunedin Hospital campaign. Invercargill Mayor T uh, Tim Shabolt appeared at Dunedin Hospital today in support of the SOS, Save Our Site or Save Our Services campaign, designed to keep Dunedin Hospital within the central city. The government has set aside $300 million to cover the costs of a new hospital building, but has not yet said where the hospital is to be built and what the future holds for the Otago Medical School. Invercargill Mayor Tim Shadbolt made a show of solidarity with Dunedin today, restating the Invercargill City Council's commitment to regional health care. Regions that suffer from the tyranny of distance like ours need to be good at campaigning and good at lobbying because otherwise we are out in the cold a little bit. Shadbolt says he and Invercargill stand behind the Dunedin City Council's decision to launch the online SOS petition, Save Our Site, Save Our Services, referring to Dunedin Hospital's central operations and education facilities. The Dunedin Council launched the campaign for the Dunedin Hospital to remain in the central city when it is rebuilt and is demanding the government retain the hospital's education facilities. The Dunedin Council says a central location in the heart of Dunedin is essential for Dunedin residents who need easy access to the hospital. From our point of view this is the perfect site because a lot of our families come down here for these services. They want to stay in close proximity to the hospital and this is where all the motels and good accommodation is located. And Shabolt says it's vital education services are retained in Dunedin so the city can lead the charge throughout the south. Technology is moving into the field so that the smaller towns like Cromwell and Twizel can be serviced through new entities and new developments. So the education of our junior students is of vital importance to the future of medical services. Five options are currently under review including developing the hospital within the existing ward block and scattering services in different sites across the city. Roselle LeBone, The South Today. Two flights between Dunedin and Christchurch have been cancelled this morning because of fog in Christchurch. Passengers were told fog is lifting in Dunedin, but substantial fog, con fog conditions remained in Christchurch. However, the, Vir the Virgin flight to Brisbane, scheduled to leave Dunedin at 8am, departed at a quarter to 11 because of delays caused by the earlier fog. Lumsden's popularity as a freedom camping town has delivered benefits for the town's swimming pool. Normally the trust which operates the pool struggles for funding to keep it open through the summer, but not this year. Here's Mina's Amso, who's straight out of Lumsden. The only swimming pool in Lumsden will be open next year, not only during the school term, but throughout the extended summer holiday period. That option was too expensive in the past, 
But not now. Generating extra funds through the Freedom Campers, which who have proved successful in gaining about a third of that funding. He says the pool costs $150 a day to run, which means the cost for 50 days over the extended holiday period is seven and a half grand. A lot of money for a small community to raise without some outside help. So they've covered a third of the funding we need to be open through the school holidays, which is what the community want. So they're doing a great service for the community. Freedom campers pay $10 for the tag for a swim and a warm shower. Yeah, then that's a great facility and obviously, yeah, you get a lot of backpackers using it. That would have been a great place to go. Yeah, I think so. Jewel says 505 Freedom campers used the pool this year, contributing over $2,500. It's always been struggling and it's, it's um, been a great boost for them. Locals now hope that this continues and that more and more Freedom Campers actually use this facility to raise more money. The roof is um, still fit for purpose but it's well past its use by date. It was probably past its use by date 10 years ago. But Jules says like many of the rural pools it is still hanging in there but it is in desperate need of upgrading. Community Trust Southland will help, but he would like the government to step in too. Because they um, have a policy of wanting to, everyone to swim, you know, my strong belief is that it should just be centrally funded, um, no argument. The pool serves the wider Northland Southland area, including Lumsden Primary School and the Northern Southland College. Mina Amso, The South Today. Valuable Central Otago lichen specimens destroyed by Australian border officials included a sample so important that government approval was needed before it could leave New Zealand. The six specimens were owned by Crown Research Institute Landcare Research. They were destroyed in Sydney last year, Landcare recently announced. Australian border officials have assured us that, that the destruction of important scientific specimens will not happen again, saying the actions contravened their own procedures. How shabby. Over 20 volunteers turned out to help North Canterbury fishing game staff with the recovery of salmon on the Waimakariri River recently. Over 70 salmon were recovered from a pool and stream system near Cust. Due to the depth of the pool, divers had to brave the cold waters and drag a net through the pond. The salmon would have been unable to reach their spawning streams before they died. Brave men. Taking the fish to a hatchery enables the salmon over and milk to be harvested. Go you, good things. Still to come on the South today, memorialising a true New Zealand back blocks hero with a mural in a public toilet. Also, Ed Sheeran and Hepatitis C. They're not in the same story. It's OK. It's on again. The Star Regent 24-hour book sale starts noon, 9th of June. Don't miss out. From rare to the recent, visit the legendary hard to find for your quality second-hand books with the largest stock in New Zealand and a friendly book-loving atmosphere. For good prices, buying or selling, come visit 20 Dowling Street. Grandad loved his family and surfing in that order. He taught me to surf and we spent a lot of time in the water together over the years. When he died, I strapped the camera to the nose of his old board and filmed the paddle out at St. Clair. Gillian's played the video on the big screen at his funeral. Grandad would have loved having everyone come out one last surf for them. Gillian's Funeral Services, helping families celebrate the lives of their loved ones for generations. Gillian's.co.nz Bring some more joy into your world by adopting one of our adult animals at SPCA Otago. Call now on 473-8252. Please adopt a pet now. They will love you forever. Hi, I'm Dennis Charlotte and road racing motorcycles is my lifetime passion. It's a massive adrenaline rush but the high speed crashes have been tough on the body over the years. I almost feel as old as my mate Ian. Sportsville, supporting tendons, ligaments and cartilage. And Energy Plus helps replace the energy that everyday living takes away. 
now feel more alive and have more sustained energy to really enjoy my racing. Buy two packs of Sportsville and get two packs of Energy Plus absolutely free. So call now 0800 502 402. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. We're a 25 Moro place at Dogwood Towers Cafe and Bar. So we take coffee very seriously. We do what's called contract roasting, so we're creating our own roasting profile and then doing our own blends. We're, we're really focused on the craft of what we're doing. You know, we're going back, instead of going on mass-produced sort of cheap things, we're taking the time to really craft what we're making. Make it so anyone can come here and have a, have a feed um, and be able to get something they're able to eat or that they, that they want to eat as well. You're kind of getting a taste of cafes from all around the world when you come here. person who's had a tragedy to a family to an individual but in fact this is an operation and the operation is there to remove a heart or set of lungs to do the process appropriately check that the organs are working and achieve a you know, technically skillful procedure. Mondays at 8pm features a series of hour-long documentaries by local filmmaker and medical doctor Paul Trotman. This week The Waiting List Organ Donation in New Zealand 8pm Monday only on Channel 39. Thank you for staying with the South today. Terrace's woolliest celebrity, the late Shrek, will be the public face of the village's new public toilets when they're finally built. Shrek, the Merino Ram, you'll remember he died a few years ago, will be immortalised in a mural. Here is the South today's Jono Edwards. Terrace is a village on the major Christchurch to Queenstown tourist route. And it's a village that has been fighting a battle for permanent public toilets to cater for tourists desperate to spend a penny. Many relieved themselves in the grounds of the Terrace Primary School, leading to the installation of two portaloos there. However, next month, a permanent solution, three unisex toilets, one with wheelchair access, will be put in place by the Central Otago District Council. The issues prior to that have been phenomenal for the school. And the children have had to deal with a lot of issues and um, felt very strongly about it and they advocated very, very strongly about, about how they felt about their school playground being used as a toilet. The wall of the toilet block will be graced by an image of Terrace's best known celebrity, the late Shrek the Sheep. The toilet project is being funded with 247000 from the government and 370000 already set aside by the council. I'm Jono Edwards for The South Today. Well, the secret is definitely out. UK-born global pop megastar Ed Sheeran is to perform at Dunedin's Forsyth Bar Stadium in late March of next year. You can hear the shrieking from here. He last performed in New Zealand in 2015 to a sold-out gig at Mount Spart Stadium in Auckland. The 2018 concert, which is set to draw 40,000 fans, will be Mr Sheeran's only South Island appearance. Reporter Roselle LeBone took to the streets to find out just who's going. I think I might have vaguely heard it in, uh, on the radio, but uh, it didn't mean much to me. So. I do like him, but I wouldn't travel to the Dunedin to see him. I love him. He's just wonderful. <laughs> well, I think he's a good entertainer. He's got a bloody good yeah. voice. Just not yeah. my cup of tea with music wise. Oh, he's all good. Yeah, it's not really my sort of thing. <laughs> I'm impartial. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind him. <laughs> do you like his show? I don't. <laughs> no, not really. I'm pretty excited. Are you going to go? No, no way. Too expensive. I'm a student, so. It's so oh, exciting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Hope so. Yes, definitely. I went to the one in Auckland um, a few years ago. Very excited, yes. He's intergenerational. They're young. I'm in my 50s. Um, just love him. It's just fantastic. Uh, I saw a note that my mum was wanting tickets. So. <laughs> 
I actually heard about it. I'm so hyped up. Holy. Like, me swim. Yeah. Yeah. Are you guys giving out tickets? Thing is, he's in Dunedin this time and he wasn't last time, I think. Everyone's pretty happy about that. Hopefully, the scalpels won't get to them beforehand either. Yeah. What's great about him? Um, he's a ginger. <laughs> He's a, great, he's a great guy overall, down to earth, you know, love him. On stage he's really amazing as well, but definitely the songwriting, yeah. How am I going to afford it? Um, shoot it alone. That's the one. Shoot it alone. If I can be at a computer on the 23rd at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, hell or high water, I will do my damnedest to be going, yes. Around 300 clients of Hep C Otago Southland will be without an advocacy service when the southern office closes its doors. Dunedin woman Alison Beck has been the service coordinator for over a decade, but she says the role is untenable now due to funding cuts. The Otago Southland Hepatitis C Resource Centre will close very soon. Alison Beck has been working at and then running the centre for 10 years but now says the centre will have to close because of a lack of funding. Beck says its closure will hit the community it serves very hard. There's approximately 200 and something people out there in this region that I know of that are going to struggle to get treatment and I have a lot of guilt leaving them, but I, I can't keep the doors open when, there's, when the money's running out. It's just not feasible. She attributes the need for the centre to close to progressive cuts to funding over the past decade, including the loss of a major contract with the SDHB. Beck believes the service model New Zealand is using pales in comparison with the Australian Hep C treatment plan. The government wants a GP-led and GP-led program and that's what they're sticking with and they've cut funding and they've got Pharmac on board and I think it's farcical at best and it's a very piecemeal approach and clipping on things to old proposals does not, does not really work in the real world. You need to wipe the slate clean, start again. Um, follow Australian models, they're uh, accessing treatment for everybody with hep C no matter the genotype over there so we ought to be doing the same. She says many of their clients have a dual diagnosis with issues in the mental health and addiction areas. Beck believes this situation is putting people's lives at risk, and she's genuinely scared of what might happen, as some of them will struggle to cope. So she offers some parting advice. If you need any assistance with Hep C, I would strongly suggest that you get to your GP and you demand a referral through to the gastro department at Dunedin Hospital. If you're down south, you would go to um, Southland Hospital, known as the Old Q Hospital. Um, we've got really good gastro staff around the SDHB region. They're about to be swamped, um, so get in quick. Be really proactive. Don't, don't rely on government or ministry to, to save your life because you'll, you'll be waiting quite some time and it may be too late. Looking visibly upset at times, Alison Beck recommends all people living with a hepatitis C diagnosis proactively seek treatment, as they will have to be their own advocates from now on. The doors to the Otago Southland Hepatitis C Resource Centre will close on May the 19th. Daryl Bazer, The South Today. That's very sad. After the break on The South Today, the pantry comes alive in Invercargill. Tomorrow's ODT and your mid to late week weather forecast. Loss of collagen is the reason for those fine lines and wrinkles. Silverhorn's Collagen Plus naturally supports your collagen levels, giving you younger, firmer looking skin, healthier, shinier hair and stronger nails. Joints, tendons, ligaments and cartilage all benefit from healthy collagen levels, the very foundation of structural health. Support collagen levels naturally with Collagen Plus by Silverhorn. Be quick, buy one now and get a second pack half price. Call now 0800 502 402. The University of Otago, an institute of world-class education and the social epicenter of the city, with outfits needed for more formal functions like the ball and for less formal functions like... The zoo? Are you sure? Yeah. Trust me. Yeah, Dad, you'll definitely see me. I'm the one in the yellow and blue face paint and the ones in the zoo.
Garador Dunedin, delivering quality stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 15 years. New doors, replacement doors, repairs and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team at 553 Kaikoua Valley Road, visit www.garador.co.nz or call us on 488 5676. Active Furnishers Limited, home of quality service with superior product and an in-house design team who are always happy to advise and create an imaginative solution for you. Active Furnishers Limited, part of Dunedin's design history. It's on again. The Star Regent 24-hour book sale starts noon 9th of June. Don't miss out. Autumn is here. Too late to sow grass seed, but never fear. Ready Lawn is here. Ready Lawn, your perfect all-year-round solution. Call Ready Lawn today. Atelier Jeu d'Esprit is, well, it's my playroom. In a lot of ways, it's me. Um, things that I see as as beautiful. The byline is whimsical trifles and fabulous fabrics. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Emu oil has been used for centuries to support joint mobility and tired muscles. Also helpful for supporting healthy skin. Available as oil or in capsules, go to www.silberhorn.co.nz to order emu oil today. On for this one and rev it up. Thursday night is Motorsport Night. Proudly brought to you by multi award winning Garrador. Thank you for staying with the South today. Invercargill's South Alive Community Development Group has taken a large step forward towards becoming a self funding bulk food store. It's called The Pantry and provides bulk food and community kitchen facilities. Here's Invercargill reporter Ruby Spank. The wait is over. Community development group South Alive can add bulk food store to the list of renewed facilities for South Invercargill. The Pantry is now open and retail manager Lisa Mohenoa says it was a long process to get the store to this point. So we took over from the, the bin-in and we have kept a lot of the same suppliers. I had to set up accounts and all that sort of stuff, but we've kept the same suppliers and we've got the same products um, and same pricing and that, so we've got this computer system. Everything from design, we had the, the architects design it um, and then the construction phase finished, I think it was... Um, around Good Friday, so um, yeah, from from that point on, the building was ready to go, and then I had three weeks to set the store up. South Alive has led initiatives such as community gardens, Aurora streetlights, dog parks, basketball courts, and beautification groups. The pantry was added to the list of projects under the 1.2 million dollar community hub plan. Mohenoa says the profits from the pantry will go to South Alive to finance further projects. The idea came from Self Alive wanting to be self-sufficient and self-sustainable so um, they don't have to fundraise and go to different places to get their funding. They can get it for themselves. The pantry will have a commercial kitchen for Kohakai, a cafe, community kitchen for cooking demonstrations, as well as the bulk food shop. The final touches are being added and customers are already checking it out. Well, I, th I didn't know what they're going to have, but they look like they're going to bulk just like Van in. So that'll suit a lot of people. 
The grand opening ceremony, which includes entertainment, competitions and a sausage sizzle, will take place on Saturday. I'm Ruby Spink for The South Today. Well done those people. And now recapping tonight's top stories on The South Today. Invercargill Mayor Tim Shadbolt has thrown his support behind Dunedin City Council's petition to redevelop Dunedin Hospital in the central city. London, Lumsden's popularity as a freedom camping town has delivered benefits to the town, specifically the town's swimming pool. And over 70 salmon were recovered, rescued, from a pool and stream system near Cust and are taken to a nearby hatchery. Hard work done well. Time now to turn our attention to the other side of the desk. And Barry, hello Craig. Good day to you sir. Good to be here. Uh, so we have reaction to the news of the Ed Sheeran concert uh, in Dunedin in March. Oh, uh, and uh, if you're looking to book accommodation, um, being quick, there's barely any very, left very, already. Very quick. Uh, Air New Zealand are also putting on extra flights. So um, all is geared up for a, a big week. Well, it's not a weekend, is it? It's but just one a, gig so far. A big occasion. Yeah, regardless. It report, was reported that there might be a second gig. Yeah, well, but that'll depend on demand, obviously, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, judging by uh, indications are that it could well be uh, could, could, could well be there. We have sent our reporter David Lockray to the Trends Tourism Conference in Auckland, uh, and he's come back and, and, and has told us new figures show the industry is worth more than $4.5 billion oh. to the Lower South Island. So uh, tourism is the go. Uh, so a number of other stories uh, from David from the conference, including uh, a talk to the Air New Zealand CEO who is tell, tells us that the Brisbane flight out of Dunedin is the only sustainable one. There won't be any uh, extra flights or venues uh, uh, to Australia from Dunedin. So the, wow. the, the, the Sydney-Melbourne one is still off, off, the, off the table. So, so it's Dunedin-Brisbane alone. That's, yeah, that's and that's what it is start. currently. But, right. um, you know, from time to time in a seasonal thing, we did some time ago have, have flights to Sydney and Melbourne. No, right. no longer. No. Uh, Queenstown Landover, an upset Queenstown Landover, has uh, t got his chainsaw out and chopped down a tree within his property. Uh, but on top of the tree, or in, in the tree, was a tree house. Uh, so some enterprising Australian uh, backpacker or carpenter uh, uh, constructed a, a little tree house without permission, but the landover owner has put a stop to that. Barry, <laughs> we'll read about that in tomorrow's You're ADT. Thank right. you very Thank much, you. sir. All right, let's wrap up this news bulletin and have a look at tomorrow's weather. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Silverhorn College and Plus. Tomorrow, a low drops easily over New Zealand and lingers until Friday, giving way to cooler southwesterlies. Occasional showers, a better weekend is promised though. To the outlook, Belclutha and everybody south, it is moderate southwesters and showers late in the day, temperatures pinned very low at 11. To Alexandra, Queenstown, all through Te Anau and Wanaka, tem temperatures are very low, light winds and a few showers from almost everybody there. To Omaru, light winds, brief passing showers for you. Omarama, brief showers and 11. Same for Timaru and Twizel. Not too bad, not too bad. Here in Dunedin tonight, cloudy light nor'easters and 7 tomorrow is cloudy cold nor'easters until about lunch. It will be wet and change to dry southwesters. Make of that what you will, 7 and 12. Friday, possible frost, inconsistent showers. And in Vicargo, 7 tonight, tomorrow 11 and 7 is your low. But Friday is a chilly 0 and 10. And unfortunately, well, Friday has increasing sun we're, pro we're proposing for anyway. Saturday, sunny and cold. That is the South Today Bulletin. I'm Craig Storey. It's always a privilege. Thank you. Good evening. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.